Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna talk about neural regulation of breathing. This is how does the brain control our respiratory rate. So first thing you need to be aware of is the fact that we've got our lungs here and we know that we need to bring air into our lungs and back out of our lungs. And the way that we do this is because of pressure changes. Now simply put, anytime you increase the volume of a container, you decrease the pressure inside. And so for example, if I were to increase the volume of our lungs by contracting the diaphragm and pulling it down, contracting the external intercostal muscles of our rib cage and pulling it up and out, the lungs get bigger. Now because you're increasing the volume, the pressure inside gets lower, that's called Boyle's Law, and when pressure is low, gas will always move from a high to a low pressure. So air rushes into the lungs. Now when we want that air or gas to go back out, we simply relax the diaphragm, it snaps back up, we relax the external intercostals, the ribcage moves back down, and the elastic recoil of the lungs snap back into place, therefore decreasing the volume, increasing the pressure inside, and gas moves back out again. So that's the basics, that's breathing mechanics. But how do we tell the muscles of the external intercostals and the muscle that's the diaphragm, how do we tell it to contract? Well, this has to come from our brain and specifically, it comes from our brain stem. Now we know our brain stem is made up of the midbrain, the pons and the medulla, but specifically we're referring to the pons and the medulla when it comes to breathing. Now, another thing you need to be aware of is we have what we call this basal breathing rate, this normal inspiration, expiration, okay? This quiet breathing. And this actually originates at the back of the medulla, the most dorsal region of the medulla, takes up most of the medulla as well. And this is the dorsal inspiratory region. And what happens is these neurons spontaneously fire off. They don't need any signals coming from anywhere else in the body, they will spontaneously fire off, they're timed to do so. In actual fact, you can cut everything below the medulla, cut everything above the medulla, and they'll still fire off. Now they won't be firing off to anything, but they'll still fire off. When they fire off and you've got a nice intact spinal cord, what they'll fire off to is they'll send signals down to C3, C4, C5. So these are the cervical nerves three, four, five, right? At the level of the neck, and they send these signals out and they will send a signal through C3, C4, C5, and these signals go down and they innervate the diaphragm. So C3, C4, C5 keeps you alive. That's what we say because they innervate the diaphragm via a nerve called the phrenic nerve. Now in actual fact, for quiet breathing, just breathing in, breathing out, quietly, 500 milliliters in, 500 milliliters out, you only need the diaphragm to contract, which means the dorsal aspect of your mandala is firing these neurons off through C3-5 and it's doing it in a patterned way, fire, stop, fire, stop, contract, relax, contract, relax, and that's normal quiet breathing. But sometimes you need a little bit more air coming in, and so this dorsal region of the medulla can also send signals down to the thoracic area that's here through a couple of nerves, and these nerves are gonna come out and they will innervate the external intercostal muscles, right? And if you innervate the external intercostal muscles, you'll tell them to contract, and if they contract, they bring the rib cage up and out, further increasing the volume, further decreasing the pressure inside, further pulling more air in, right? So it's all about, if you want more air in, you've just gotta increase that thoracic volume. All right, so we've spoken about these inspiratory neurons here at the medulla that spontaneously fire off, but we can also, depending on what's happening in our body, we can alter that, okay? There's actually an area above it in the pons, again, the dorsal region at the back of the pons, and this is called the pneumotaxic area, and what this does is it's like a switch, okay, like a light switch. Because these neurons in the medulla are gonna constantly fire off, sometimes you need to tell them to stop. And if you tell them to stop, it shortens the breath in. So instead of, you can fire the pneumotaxic area and you go, so you can increase your respiratory rate. Again, through this pneumotaxic area. And like I said, it sends these inhibitory signals to these inspiratory neurons that are spontaneously firing off. Now, other things can happen in our body. For example, if we have increased levels of CO2, decreased levels of O2, or increased concentration of hydrogen ions 
in the blood, these can all trigger this inspiratory center in the medulla. And one of the ways that it can do it in the peripheral portion of our body, okay, so not centrally, not in the brain or brain stem, but it can do it peripherally at the aorta. So here's the aortic arch. So you can have the heart here, the aortic arch coming out. Here's the three branches and two of them turn into carotids and you're gonna have chemoreceptive neurons, okay? So these are chemoreceptors. They're based at the aortic arch. They're also based in the carotids and they will pick up concentrations of increased carbon dioxide, decreased oxygen and increased hydrogen ion concentration and they will send signals to this inspiratory center. Now, if they're doing it via the carotids, it's gonna be through the glossopharyngeal nerve and if it sends it via the aortic arch, it's via the vagus nerve. And like I said, it stimulates these neurons and tells you let's breathe a little bit more. So what we've got here is the neural control of breathing. It's stimulated predominantly by increased carbon dioxide and predominantly from decreased hydrogen ions. And basically the last scenario is decreased oxygen. That's right, increased carbon dioxide mainly because we know the equation CO2 plus H2O gives you H2CO3, carbonic acid, which hates itself, splits itself apart, turns into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. But the most important thing here is CO2 turns into acid in the blood. Carbon dioxide turns to acid. We don't like acid, we die if we have too much of it. So one way of getting rid of it is breathing out. Breathe out CO2, breathe out acid. Therefore, the body is most receptive to CO2 and acid as stimulators to breathe. And that is the neural control of breathing.